Yellow, green, sea people, crustaceous, earth creatures floating around in nemones like I don't see them at the fir- ocean, ocean mine like I see Piccadilly green card style, circus in the sky like diamonds explosions. See it 3,415. I see you looking at me. I see you, Louis Gossett Jr. In my mind, I don't think so. Looking around in green grass like lizards floating along. I don't think so, Ronald Reagan. <laughs> when you see that happening on the street, <laughs> There's always a small part of you that's filled with that rising excitement of like, oh, street poetry? Then <laughs> just that sinking devastation of, oh, schizophrenia. Yeah. No, that's, that's too bad. I don't know what that, everyone's all bummed out. I don't know what that says about us as a society where a mental illness would disappoint you. You're just looking like, oh, people steer the other way with their kids. I don't know how to solve that. Other, you know, some people feel like they could relate to that person. Oh, they just need someone to talk to them. Sir, excuse me, I, all day people have been walking, what's that? No, I'm not a fish, excuse me. <laughs> so that doesn't usually work out too well. The other option is, it, it otherwise would be creativity, but you can't treat it that way. You can't walk over and be like, yeah, man, dig it, all right. <laughs> so it's just kind of a problem that keeps not getting solved. What a terrible condition. I, I have done that joke before, I apologize. I know that's disappointing to hear. And uh, a woman emailed me and said, like, hey, your joke really perpetuates a stigma, and it's unnecessary. And I was like, yeah, all jokes are unnecessary. <laughs> Have you ever been like, thank God I needed that joke? I guess maybe sometimes, but uh, I don't know. Schizophrenia just seems terrible in that it would be that voice that, you all, that we all have in our head all the, and you couldn't stop it from coming out of your body. That seems terrifying to me. I think that's why watching stand-up comedy is so nice because you, you get to shut it off. You listen to something else and then it's trying to peek in. You go, no, no, I don't hear you. I'm listening to this. And it's such a good feeling. Just like, eh, eh, I don't hear you. Just react gutturally. It's terrific. It's, it's the best. I, sometimes, you know, it, it is incorrect. You're, you don't trust your brain. You know, you could be sitting there and then your brain goes, that's funny. And you go, <laughs> nope, we're not laughing. Okay, we're all, we're all, you guys are right. And it's hard to trust yourself when a group of people goes, that wasn't funny. You were laughing incorrectly. So I don't know how you trust the, uh, the voice in your head. You can make the argument that some people have trusted the voice in their head very successfully in history. You could say that all the prophets from the major religions were really just listening to a voice in their head when they received their revelations and not a voice in the sky. I'm not saying that is what happened, but you can make that argument. I think the most compelling evidence to support that is the fact that all those guys were around the same age when they received the revelation, all around their early 30s, which is a very peculiar age, early 30s, because you're not old enough to be a failure yet, but you need to get your shit together. <laughs> it's just the perfect age to be a handyman or a shepherd or a rich kid or a struggling science fiction writer. Just be like, oh, I've got to get my life together. This is ridiculous. I'm making no money. My friends are idiots. They're doing fine. They got kids and houses. I, I'm better than this. I got a lot to offer. What's that voice in my head? I do have some good ideas, and people should hear them. They should write it in a book and come to a building once a week and sit down and talk about how great I am and the ideas and give me money and drink punch. It's going to be great. But then they have to go out and actually start a religion. You have people that go through that same feeling in your life, and your friends just go start a blog or like a zine or something. <laughs> Back then, you had to start an entire religion to get people to hear your ideas, and most of the good ones were already taken. Even if you came up with like, oh, that's great. I'm gonna say that the guy in the sky is actually my debt that's taken? Oh, all right. What about, okay, what about, this is crazy. What if I say there was this bush that was on fire that told me all these weird, you're kidding me. That's been, I would not have guessed that. I thought I was pretty proud of that one. Um, Okay, what about like a spaceship full of aliens crashing at it? That's open? I'll do that! I'll do that! <laughs> and then you've got yourself a religion going. That's one theory as to how religions got started. It's not very popular. Uh, the other theory that most people, you know, uh, believe in is even weirder to me that they were walking along and heard a voice up in the sky and then immediately started doing its bidding. That is weird to me. The people just went, what? You want me to do what? You got it! And just took off. <laughs> No one ever stopped for a second to find out who that voice belonged to. Just like, whoa, what? You want me to do? I, I hear you. Who are you? Where'd you go to high school, bro? Give me a little backstory. No one did that, which I can understand. It would be a lot to take in all at once if you were out walking around and all of a sudden from the sky you heard, hey, you. Like, all right, I've been out in the sun way too long. I gotta have a seat. No, I'm real. Look up here. I don't see anything. I know, I'm in the clouds, nice, right? I guess, who are you? 
I'm God. I created all of the things. See that tree over there? Keep an eye on it. <laughs> now it's a snake. Do you want to be a snake? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I do not want to be a snake. What do you want me to do? And then go from there almost immediately to that same guy with a knife over his oldest son's neck, just like, <laughs> okay, didn't see this coming. This is, I thought you are going to have me chop down a tree or something. This is pretty intense, but uh, I guess I'm going to do it because I don't want to be a snake, so I'm going to kill my son. Oh, this hurts. It's, I love this kid. You should know that. He's not the smartest, but he tries real hard. It's almost more endearing, but oh, this is hard for me, but I'm going to do it. I don't want to be a snake. Here I go. I guess I'm messing with you, bro. <laughs> I'm a joker. That's me in a nutshell. Had to know you're on my team. That guy is clearly a lunatic. <laughs> when no one should be listening to that insanity. But maybe that voice wasn't God. I'm not saying there is no God or that God didn't create the universe or even that God didn't talk to people. But maybe that voice was not God. You know, maybe God created the universe and then he created a monitoring station like a security guard's office <laughs> with some different screens so he could check in on people. Maybe an intercom button just in case he needed to talk to them. But then on the seventh day, God rested. And Eddie, the lonesome night janitor, <laughs> who hates his older brother, came sweeping in. He's like, kill your oldest boy! Oh, that felt good. That felt good, Ed. <laughs> that's where all the weird ideas came from. <laughs>